All right, so here is the explanation why in the Cournot model we solve the reaction functions simultaneously. Um, and here is the reason. Well, the, this solution, we actually call it Nash equilibrium, which was the original solution uh, sort of suggested by, uh, rec recommended by the Cournot itself. Um, so Cournot was a French mathematician, as far as I know. Um, and he provided that solution way before uh, Nash. And the Nash and the Cournot solutions actually coincides in this uh, problem. So sometimes people call the Nash equilibrium as the Cournot-Nash equilibrium because sort of the Cournot was uh, sort of thought about this solution concept, you know, the best response and then solving them simultaneously. But the idea is the following. Um, so this is a simultaneous move game. And what does that mean? That means uh, each player do not know the opponent's actions, right? Okay, so what action uh, my, my opponent will be taking? I don't know. What we do, I make a guess. So for example, firm one makes a guess, Q2, and then calculate the best reply, best response to that. So if my opponent is producing Q2, I'm gonna produce in Q1 according to this function, all right? So that's my best response. Like, you know, the highest profit can be attained if I produce that much given that my guess is, is correct, obviously. Well, the same for uh, uh, firm two. It's like, I make a guess and then calculate my best response. So the question is, what should I guess at the very first place? So the Nash equilibrium or the Cournot Nash equilibrium says, well, um, these two firms, these two players should make a guess such that once the game is over, I mean, once the quantities are out there, none of them should uh, regret of their choices. Okay? So, no regret. Please keep that in mind because it will, again, play an important role uh, throughout the next three chapters, oligopoly, um, you know, the game theory and game theory applications. So once again, the Cournot-Nash suggests that the optimal quantities of this model should be such that once the game is over and the firms release their quantities to the market, none of them is going to regret of its choice. None of the firms will regret of its choice. It's like the firm is not going to say, oh, shoot. I guessed something else, but my opponent produced this, and I wish I should have done something else, all right? It's like, that's not gonna happen. So it's gonna be a regret-free outcome. So that's the idea. So, well, you may, I mean, we can discuss why this was the solution, but this is not the right video for that. But the, the Cournot-Nash outcome is a stable outcome. And, and here, the stability, the concept of stability is that uh, they're not gonna, they're not gonna, you know, uh, uh, regret. So, and here is sort of the reason why we should solve those simultaneously in order to reach that regret-free outcome. And for this, I think we need a standard uh, graph where we basically draw the best response function of both firms on the same uh, picture. So here I'm going to put quantities of firm one. And here, the vertical axis will be quantities of firm two. And I'm going to draw their best response functions for this particular question. But usually, it's going to be uh, a, a some linear function. Um, you know, if the, uh, if the marginal cost is fixed, it's going, they're going to be linear. Otherwise, it doesn't have to be linear, obviously. But the best response functions will be downward sloping, uh, most probably. So here is the quantity. I'm sorry, the best response function for firm one. So if Q2 is zero, the Q1, the intercept has to be three. So I don't know, this is one, this is two, this is three, let's say, okay? And once again, one, two, and three, let's say. And when Q1 is zero, so I'm looking for the vertical axis, uh, vertical intercept. So Q2 is gonna be, so 0.5 Q2 equals three, multiply both sides by two to get rid of 0.5. So Q2 must be six. Oops, uh, 
That's a problem. So therefore, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do the following. So let's make this six. All right. Let's make that six. And so the midpoint somewhere here, let's make this three. Let's make this three. So what happened is six, three. So that is the best response function for firm one. All right. Q1, Q2. Now I'm going to draw the best response function of firm two. So if Q1 is zero, I'm looking for the Y intercept. The Q2 is going to be three. All right. And when Q2 is zero, Q1 is going to be 0.5 Q1 equals three, multiply both sides by two, six. All right. So these are the intercepts. And then because this function is linear, that I connect the dots. So this is Q2, Q1. Just to denote that these are the best reply functions. Okay, so they intersect at some point, right? And I claim that this is the Cournot point um, to, well, that's how lucky I am. Um, um, so two, two. So this should be the uh, point of intersection. Well, by the way, the, the point of intersection means it's the point where satisfy the two equations at the same time, meaning you simultaneously solve those equations. That means you're finding the point of intersection. So what I'm trying to show is that why this point of intersection should be the outcome, should be the no regret outcome. So let's say it's something else. All right. Um, I need a color pen for this. So let's say it's something else. All right. I don't know. I mean, anything else. So for example, uh, firm one produces something less than two. Okay, this is what firm one produces. Uh, well, what about firm two? Whatever that is, all right? So firm two, uh, firm two and firm one, however, produces this Q1, uh, I don't know, Q1 bar, all right? Q1 bar. So let's say this is the no regret output, output, I'm sorry. Is this really the case? Well, given that firm one is produces Q1 bar, what is the best thing for firm two? No, well, it has to be this. All right, whatever that is, Q2 bar. Is it Q2 bar and Q2 are the same? I don't know. But the thing is, if Q1 bar is the firm one's choice, the best thing for firm two is Q2 bar. All right. All right. Well, let's say Q1 bar, Q2 bar. Is this the no regret output? All right. I mean, anything other than Q2 bar, it's going to be regretful, right? I mean, the firm two is going to regret. For example, if firm two chooses this quantity, all right, the firm two is going to say, oh, shoot, I should have chosen Q2 bar because that's the profit maximizing output. If the firm two chooses something here, again, it's going to regret of that choice. And the firm two will say, should I should have chosen Q2 bar because given Q1 bar, this is exactly what the profit maximizing output is. How do I know that? Well, because this is the best response function. This is what it means. Best response is like Q1 bar. The best response to that is Q2 bar. So this should be maybe a regret free outcome, but is it? So let's say this outcome is revealed. I mean, they both produce Q1 bar, Q2 bar, all right, and, and, and release that to the market. Well, is there anyone who's going to regret? The firm two is definitely best responding. You know, that's the best uh, firm two could do. But what about firm one? If firm two is actually producing Q2 bar, firm one, this is the best response function for firm one, would have actually produced Q1 a double bar. All right. So to this, best for firm one is Q1 uh, double bar. All right. It's, it's more. Um, so you know what? This is not regret free. Firm one this time is going to regret. So what about um, Q2 bar and then Q1 double bar? Would that be regret free outcome? Maybe this one is because now firm one is also best responding. But now once I change the quantity of the uh, firm one, uh, I should have put Q1 bar first and then Q2 uh, bar. 
okay? Uh, once I change the quantity of Ferm1, uh, well, the best response for Ferm2 will naturally change, right? So, yes, if Ferm1 actually produces Q1 double bar, we go all the way up to the best response function for Ferm2, and you know what? Q2 double bar is the best response function. So, not Q2 bar, but Q2 double bar. So the question is, what about Q1 double bar, Q2 double bar? Is this regret-free? No, if Q2 double bar is what producer firm 2 produces, firm 1 is going to produce something very close to 2, uh, but this thing, Q1 triple bar. All right. So I think you see the trend, right? Whenever the outcome is, all right, so we started, for example, here, Firm 2 is going to regret, so it's going to produce this, but then Firm 1 is going to regret, but then Firm 2 is going to regret once the outcomes are revealed, and then Firm 1 is going to regret, and so on and so forth. So as you see, we basically approach to this point. Once we're at this point, what happens is that, so let's say uh, this point is revealed, like 2 and 2, okay? Will anybody regret once this outcome is uh, revealed? No. Firm 2 says, well, you know what? G given that my opponent decided to produce 2, producing 2 was the best thing I could do. I mean, I could try producing more than 2 or less than 2, but that would decrease my profit. So 2 was the best thing. That's what Firm 2 will think. Similarly, firm one is going to say, oh, given that firm two produced two units, well, I'm lucky that I produced two as well because uh, that was the best I could do. All right. So therefore, two and two will be the regret-free outcome. And it is the only regret-free outcome in this game, meaning this is the only Cournot Nash solution in this game. Well, because the best response functions intersect only at one point. So it's like a supply demand in the perfectly competitive market. Here, the supply demand, I mean, we don't have supply demand, but best response functions, all right? But the idea is pretty much uh, similar. So this point of intersection is, is, is where nobody, no firm is gonna regret of that choice, all right? And uh, that's exactly why uh, the, the nash Cournot solution uh, is the solution of the Cournot model, okay? I hope that was clear.